Good morning. It's Tuesday of Holy Week. Uh, and the passage that we're going to look at today, uh, the question about Jesus' authority and John the Baptist's authority, is actually, uh, according to some scholars, said to uh, have occurred on Tuesday of what became for us Holy Week. So it's a very appropriate passage today. Um, let's begin with prayer. God, thank you for this time to be together as the Monday study group and to uh, consider your word and to follow the life of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Um, a song uh, that we might have sung if we had been together uh, is a song that underlines the authority of Jesus. Um, it's called At the Name of Jesus. And it goes like this. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him, King of glory now. Tis the Father's pleasure, we should call him Lord, who from the beginning was the mighty word. Humbled for a season to receive a name from the lips of sinners unto whom he came. Faithfully he bore it, spotless to the last, brought it back victorious when from death he passed. And the rest of the verses um, talk about that name of Jesus, which he bore triumphantly um, as he rose from the dead and entered the, the right hand of his father, the throne of God on high. Um, it appeals to us then uh, at the end of the hymn to enthrone him, the King and Lord, in our own hearts and let him subdue all that in us is not holy and not true. Uh, to crown him as captain of our lives and let his will enfold us. And then there's a final verse that promises his return uh, to reign in glory over all the earth so that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So that's our, our hymn for today. All right, the passage uh, we're looking at is the second half of the one you had study questions on, and that's the question of Jesus' authority. Again, I'm reading from the NRSV. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, well, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. And so they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. So uh, this first controversy story in verses 23 through 27 is the first of five controversy stories in the Gospel of Matthew at this point. The next one is going to be the question of paying taxes over in chapter 22. Then the question about the resurrection is the third one. The question about what the, is the greatest commandment in the law is the fourth one. And the fifth one is the question about David's son. It, that ends chapter 22. And the way Matthew has structured this, uh, this first question, this first controversy story in verses 23 to 27 is separated from the second one by, if you notice in your Bible, three parables. 
the parable of the two sons, the parable of the wicked tenants, and the parable of the wedding banquet. And all three of these are parables of judgment to some degree uh, and implying a, a critique of the Jewish leaders and Jewish authorities, which then makes it fit very well with this first controversy story about the question of Jesus' authority. They all, all this teaching takes place in the temple and Jesus has just cleansed the temple um, and, at, and performed this acted parable of judgment against um, those who were turning the temple into a den of robbers. And then we had uh, yesterday the story of the uh, cursing of the fig tree, which symbolized uh, Israel and and showing that it was not producing the fruit that God expected Israel to produce, uh, which was the fault of, again, the Jewish leaders who are the main opponents, uh, interlocutors is a word we could use for this, dialogue partners uh, with Jesus uh, in the temple area over the next couple of chapters. So when he entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people, notice these are the leaders, the, the priests are in charge of the temple. These are probably Sadducees for the most part. The Pharisees are not mentioned here, although they will be mentioned later. And they ask two questions. By what authority, uh, the Greek word he implies, <coughs> excuse me, what kind of authority, and, uh, and who gave you this authority? The question of not only the kind of authority Jesus has, but uh, the origin of that authority. And to notice a, a second thing about the questions, the two questions that they ask in verse 23, uh, by what authority are you doing these things? Well, these things would include the cleansing of the temple uh, for sure. Uh, the healing that he did in the temple back in uh, verse 15, uh, they were amazed at the things he did because he had cured the blind and the lame in the temple. Uh, and maybe also it would include the triumphal entry and the controversy and uproar that occurred as Jesus rode into the temple area on the donkey and the colt in Matthew uh, and, and caused uh, the people to be in such a turmoil that the whole city was shaken. Remember, we talked about the seismic effect of Jesus' teaching and his presence. And so, by what authority are you doing all these things, and who gave you that authority? And so, in, in very good rabbinic fashion, Jesus um, strikes back, as it were. Uh, if this is a fencing match, this is his move after their move. His move is to parry their their sword, their question away, and to ask them a question. I will also ask you a question, and if you tell me the answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. And of course, then the very question that Jesus asked them will re reveal, if they were honest about it, the uh, the answer to the questions that they ask Jesus, uh, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? So he asked them whether the baptism of John came from heaven or was it of human origin? Now, it's not just um, any old question that Jesus asked them because there's a tight connection, isn't there, between uh, John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus and who pointed to Jesus as the one who would be the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, according to at least uh, the Gospel of John. Um, but John did say he was like a voice in the wilderness preparing the way of the Lord in Matthew, um, and that his mission was to um, make clear uh, the path of the of the one who would come uh, to bring uh, his messianic kingship uh, to the people of Israel, to be the kind of Messiah perhaps that they weren't expecting. Um, but uh, nevertheless, John and Jesus, uh, who are related, uh, that they are cousins, uh, John and Jesus have a close link together in their own relationship. And so it's not just any old 
um, idea that Jesus comes up with here, there's a tight connection between who John the Baptist was and what he was about and who Jesus is and what he is about. So uh, they argue with one another uh, in verse 25, um, and they consider their alternatives if they say from heaven, that is from God. Matthew uh, often avoids the use of the word God. Uh, Luke, for example, uses kingdom of God all the time. Uh, Matthew prefers kingdom of heaven. He as uh, he, he avoids the divine name, as, as was customary in Judaism. He de avoids the use of the name God. And so did the baptism of John come from God or heaven, or was it merely, merely of human origin? That is, maybe John's own idea or some that the people may have put John up to this. Merely a human idea. And they say that if we say from God or from heaven, then uh, they like anticipating your opponent's moves in a chess match. Um, they know that Jesus will then say, well, if you agree that John's ministry and message came from heaven, then why didn't you believe in him? Uh, because they didn't accept the baptism of John. Uh, the, he was popular in Galilee especially. Uh, everyone thought he was a prophet sent from God. Um, and when the Pharisees and other uh, Jewish leaders came to John, he, John called them a brood of vipers, remember? Uh, why, did you, why have you come to uh, receive this baptism? Show in your lives the fruit of repentance, because that's what my baptism is all about. So uh, they did not accept the authority of John's baptism. They did not believe, at least by their actions, they showed they did not believe what John was doing was from God. And so they know that Jesus will critique them for saying, if you say it was from heaven, then why didn't you go respond to what God was doing? Um, but if they say that it was merely of human origin, um, then they threaten their position with the multitude. Uh, who are there in uh, Jerusalem for Passover, thousands of pilgrims, um, many, many from Galilee who would have regarded John as a prophet. And if they, if it catches um, fire, uh, as it were, among the people that the leaders don't think John the Baptist was a real prophet, that is from God, um, then they will lose authority with the people and uh, there could be a further conflict possibly even violence. And so they know that if we say of human origin, um, they were afraid of the crowd for all regarded John as a prophet. And so they decide that they can't say one way or the other. That is, they can't say honestly, you know, because both answers, either answer would reflect badly on them. Uh, and so they, they, even though they do know the answer, I think, to Jesus' question, um, they do know that John the Baptist was sent from God, and they do suspect that Jesus was sent from God, but they can't admit that. Now, it's certainly fair for you to think also that they don't know uh, at all. They're unsure, maybe, uh, unsure of whether John was just making it up himself. Uh, in his ministry, and that Jesus is usurping their authority in a way that's not from God. So it's possible that they don't know. I think they do suspect, though, because for them, it's all about them, isn't it? It's all about, well, how will we uh, turn out here? If we say this, we'll look bad. If we say that, he'll do this. Uh, and so it's all about them and their response rather than about the truth. And so they say, we do not know. And so Jesus says to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing all these things. Because the correct answer to the question Jesus asks them is the same answer, the same correct answer to the questions that they ask Jesus. By what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? So uh, this is the first of these five controversy stories 
um, showing Jesus in typical Mid-Eastern mid fashion in an honor-shame society, uh, that Jesus gains honor here. He, as uh, I think um, Osborne says, he scores the first goal in this World Cup match uh, between Jesus and his interlocutors uh, in the area of the temple between Jesus and the Jewish leadership. Uh, and so uh, one nothing, one nil, uh, as we say in football, right, in world football, one nil for Jesus here in his conflict uh, with the Jewish authorities. Um, and I think that's uh, all the study questions I gave you so far through verse 27. Uh, we'll now look at at least the first two of the parables in the next set of study questions, and that will finish chapter 21. So I uh, probably won't talk to you again until um, next week, and that will be after Easter. So happy Easter. Wish we could all be together this week to celebrate uh, the the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, but I know you'll find a way to do that um, online with your own church community. Um, if you don't know where such worship services are available online, you can certainly email me and I can give you um, the worship services for uh, several of the churches on the island uh, which uh, have come across uh, my information. So uh, take care. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Amen.